When it comes to painting, it should be fun. However, a lot of new painters, we kind of get stuck in doing the same techniques over and over, and it should be all about experimenting to see what works best for you. Which is why in this video right here, I'm gonna show you four different ways to paint clouds. So that way you can see if it's gonna fit your style or techniques, or at the very least, have you branch out to try something new and fun. What is up all my painting people? Wild here helping you become bigger and better with your painting adventures. Now, like I said, this is all about having fun, experimenting, and getting you to try something different. So I'm gonna show you four different clouds with four different brushes and tools. And if you need to know what I'm using, links down in the show notes below, which helped me out. So thank you very much, but let's head over to our canvas and have some fun. The first brush we're gonna be using is the Bob Ross Foliage Brush, which is essentially just a giant round brush, but you can also substitute in a mop brush as well. Take your mop brush and just tap it into some color and kind of get it mostly on the end. And all we're gonna do is literally just tap in color just like this and get it to stick with these little ridges. Now, all we're caring about is the top ridge here. And when you make a cloud, you kind of want to go up, down, left, and right. And the reason I love this gigantic round brush is it's awesome for making soft clouds everywhere. When using the foliage brush, just tap around and have fun and put a little extra pressure towards the top of your cloud because that's all we really need it to make out. This brush, like I said, is fantastic for background clouds that just have a little bit of detail in them. And the best part is any beginning painter out there can do this right away. Just look how beautiful and soft we got some clouds with some awesome details in there with just moments of tapping in some white. The next brush we're gonna use is a fan brush. Now you can use any size fan brush you want. Can be large on the fan, can be small on the fan. It's really up to you, but all we're gonna do is concentrate on using the corner. And you'll generally see Bob Ross do this a lot because it's very easy to wisp in a cloud. Even though we're gonna be painting with generally the corners of the fan brush, you still wanna load up the fan brush with a lot of paint. Come at the canvas straight on, turn and lift up or down with your paintbrush by dipping your elbow or wrist a little bit. Now we're just gonna wisp in a couple of clouds. So start wherever you think there's gonna be and all you're gonna do is literally whisk. I'm gonna stay here for a second so I can show you the movement and technique. In fact, let me, let me get my hand out of here a little bit. I'm literally just whisking, like I'm whisking an egg. And you kind of want to go up, you want to go down, you want to go right, you want to go left, and you want to allow those fan brush bristles to bend a little bit. And you see how you get like a little bit of kissing of the other bristles going in there? That's going to make some really fun highlights and techniques. Whenever you run out of paint or you feel like you do, you can just flip the fan brush over and just start whisking again. Now I like doing these type of clouds when I want to have a lot more highlight be present on top of the cloud. It's gonna leave a bigger blob that you can blend into the body and also kind of make like a crown again with the sunlight hitting it, but it's gonna be more dominant, which makes it awesome if you want them to be a little more standing out in your painting. But on the bottom clouds we have here, these can be your little wisp clouds that kind of hang around the horizon. One of the best reasons about the fan brush is you have control, but it's still a little bit of a wild card because all those bristles are gonna kick in different directions sometimes, making it look like your cloud has more movement and action in it. So please remember that when you're painting your scenery. The next brush we're gonna use is this junky old filbert brush, but you can use a square or any filbert brush of any size will work. This is great because we're gonna have a little bit more control than the fan brush, and we're gonna get a lot more highlights with it because we can go back over it a couple of times. Load up your filbert brush with a lot of paint and it's gonna get contaminated very quickly. So also have a paper towel nearby. So that way when you're painting in your colors here or your clouds on top of color, you're gonna see it gets contaminated. So you wanna wipe that off. So that way when you reload your brush, it's gonna be pure white. And again, you kinda of have fun with it. You can wisp or you can tap in some motions here. Now this is gonna be a two stage one because we're gonna lay in our base clouds first before we come back and highlight them, okay? What I like to do with the filbert brush, since it can get contaminated easily, is I like to lay in a base layer of clouds, which I consider my template that I can follow. And I like to pull the clouds down into an easy gradient to where after I put this first layer in, I have a better visualization of where I can put highlights on for my second application. The nice thing about the filbert brush is you get so much control that you can really take your time and add in highlights where you can. It's also very forgiving. If you add too much paint in one spot, 
you can easily just blend it into the middle of the cloud so that way it looks like it just has slightly more body to it. Now I'm gonna use my filler brush and just blend in a little bit of these highlights down to the bottom side just so it's a little easier for my two inch brush. I like to use the corner of my bristles and kind of just pull down in a little circular motion just to help break up the highlight a little bit so it looks a little more natural when it blends in. Now you at home, please take your time with this because it'll help pay off. But me on YouTube, I'm gonna go a little bit quicker just to give you the idea. Now you can't stop here and leave all this beautiful texture, but if you want, you can take your two inch brush and blend this in and make it a little smooth and put another layer of clouds in, which I'm gonna do real quick just to show you what it looks like. Using the Filbert brush really gets you a lot of patchwork clouds, which is awesome, because you see so many highlights and midpoints and shadow points, all with just one color in your base color in the background. It's really fun just to poke around and add highlights here and there. Give it a shot, it's really fun. For our last square here, we're gonna be using the Almighty Palette Knife, and we're gonna rub in some clouds. Now, I'm not good at this, which will be fun because it's experimenting for me, but let's see if we can do it together. Just gonna darken this up here for you real quick because I'm actually gonna do this a little bit stormy. I'm feeling a little uh, inspired here at the moment, so let's make some stormy clouds with some highlights on them. There we go. For the colors I'm using on my palette knife here, it's just a mixture of our phalo blue that we used on our background here a little bit of bright red and black. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna treat it just like a brush, but we're gonna push a little harder here and we're gonna just grind in our color. I'm using mostly the corner of our palette knife. And then I'm gonna kind of push in with the harder edge here to flatten out as I kind of feel out the shape I want. And all I'm gonna do is just push paint around here a little bit. Let's scratch some over this way. Flip it back just cause I wanna get a little edge. There we go. Gonna take my filbert brush here and just pull all these bigger blobs into my cloud a little bit and wisp this down and in so it blends a little more naturally into our background here, which I'll fix with the two inch brush here in just a moment, but I want something a little more control. Plus I wanna fill in all these big gouges and scratches I put in here, but let's just see how this turns out. This is kind of an experiment for me as well. Let's see if we can save and have fun with this one. Let's keep that gap there. Gonna take some marble red and white. Let's see what kind of fun things we can make happen here. Just gonna kind of grab and see where highlight would kind of grab for fun. And try to shape a little bit of a cloud here. Now I'm gonna work out some of the big globs with some brush strokes here, just cause I wanna make everything even as if I was painting with a normal paintbrush. So I'm just gonna build the body in, just gonna pull very gingerly down and in some of these big blobs. Let's see what we can try to blend and create here. I think this is gonna be interesting. And if anything, it is an experiment. But you never know what you might get. This is what the fun part about painting is. Trying new things. All right, let's pray to the Bob Ross gods. Let's blend in down here just ever so slightly. Let's start to give some lifts here. See if we can form something. Oh, are we getting something? Maybe, maybe. Definitely a lot of colors here. Let's even this out and let's see what we get here. Nice soft strokes across, just to even out our brush strokes here. Very, very lightly. Oh, are we starting to see something here? Jackson Pollock clouds, perhaps? Oh, well, there's a lot of colors in here with a lot of different highlights. This looks interesting. Abstract, perhaps. As you can see, you can get so many different styles of clouds from easy to do clouds to extremely hard and difficult as we saw with the palette knife. 
from soft and fluffy to really detailed with a lot of highlights where you can take your time. I recommend you try doing all these clouds because it's a fun way to really, you know, get outside your comfort zone and paint something new. Plus, you never know where it might lead you to. And I've got the perfect place where you can try all these different clouds. I have an awesome painting tutorial that I'm gonna put right over here that allows you to paint row after row after row of clouds where you can play around with it and have some fun. Check that video out. Now, if you need anything else from me, hey, subscribe to the channel and I will see all of you awesome people in the next one. Take care and of course, peace.